Today's video, we're going to be breaking down Pavin versus Decroft. This is in the Red Hot Gaming Madden Super Weekend Tournament. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at kind of what they're doing. Now, Pavin, actually, at this point in the Madden season, one of the better uh, bunch players, one of the better players in general in terms of Mudhead League. His uh, record pretty pretty impressive so far through uh, the beginning stages of Mudhead League. So with that being said, uh, going to go ahead and get into this matchup. Obviously, I'm just checking this straight off W stream. If you guys haven't checked out Dubby's channel, link's going to be in the description to check him out. If you guys want to check out any of my full offensive, defensive ebooks, all those are going to be linked in the description below. Uh, Patreon members get access to all of that stuff for just 10 bucks. And uh, again, link is going to be down in the description. Okay, so uh, Madden Super, we Super Weekend here. And it looks like Decroft is going to be in the Seahawks jerseys and Pavin is going to be in the Pats jerseys to, uh, to kind of get going here. So it looks like Pavin gets ball first, uh, kind of a standard deal here. Decroft actually came to the to the uh, tournament with some quarters defense. Uh, here, going to go off size, just kind of getting the getting everything set up. Now, uh, real quick, this is kind of the new meta here. A lot of people running this defense. This is coming out in double safety blitz. We have a full ebook on this on our on our Patreon page that explains everything about the defense. But essentially, the safeties are going to come down here into the box. What this is going to then do is it's going to allow for a couple more blitz threats, but it's also, as these guys drop into zones, they're going to be able to kind of play these these basic seams and, and things like that. So that's something to kind of look out for. Typically, when you're running this defense, you could send uh, both slot corners. You could also potentially send a five-man pressure through the, through the A-gap like that. Kind of just depends. And then also, you can play coverage out of this. I will say... One of the drawbacks to this defense is the three-man, when you're just sending th these three guys right here, the sheds are significantly, uh, in my opinion, worse than if you were to pinch your defensive line. So that'll be something to watch. But anyway, it looks like d going to be starting out in DB Fire 2. Pavin is in Colts Bunch. And we're going to start out here just kind of with a standard run. Now, the purpose behind the run here, it actually doesn't solve its, its main objective. So the main purpose behind that run play was to get the ball in a hash mark to make the uh, zones a little bit more predictable and just kind of help things uh, in terms of its ability from, from a practice perspective. Wasn't able to do that, so now we're kind of still in the middle of the field. And Pavin's going to throw this this uh, double post play. So uh, as I said here, you see Decroft is going to go with a DB Fire 2 setup and essentially just trying to kind of close off some throwing lanes. So one of the things that we get here is a middle third. We have a little hook curl, a little five-man pressure. And then we're basically playing essentially cover three with hard flats. It's kind of what it looks like here with a little yellow over on this side. It's kind of interesting uh, coverage. Uh, this route right here is going to be thrown in this little window. The user at this point is, you know, basically not really guarding. He, he should be committing here. I'm not sure why he's not. Uh, he actually goes over here. I don't know if he was assuming the running back was on an in route. Not sure. Maybe he's trying to take away the step up in the pocket. Anyways, Pavin is going to get the ball out and be able to throw the ball effectively. So, now we've got uh, a little audible over here to Bunch Strong Nasty. This is kind of standard. Here's what you're seeing a lot of this cover three coverage, little wheel route, and this is why you do this. So when you're blitzing, uh, when you're blitzing in Madden, this is kind of important. One of the things that I think is really important in terms of how do you craft a coverage behind a pressure versus how do you craft a coverage behind a coverage system is whenever you're trying to send a four or five man blitz, it's really good to try to make sure that you're taking advantage or you're, you're taking away the layup throws or the wide open three point throws. So what do I mean when I say that? I mean, essentially what you're gonna get here is a hard flat, a third typically, and then over here on this left side, you might get like a little cloud flat and a half, but in general, the reason this is such a good coverage for a five man pressure is because this is a layup throw. Somebody almost always is going to be kind of attacking, you know, this flat area of the field. And then the user can kind of take at least one portion of the middle of the field. And then if we have this safety kind of rolling in the middle of the field, that is going to significantly help the coverage behind it. So as we kind of look to this play post snap, and here we actually get the exact setup. So you're going to see you've got pressure coming off the edge here, right? Pressure, pressure, pressure. And then what we do is we actually take the linebacker, it appears, and put him in that hard flat. So what is that going to do a good job of? Well, it's going to take away the layup throws, and it's going to force you to have to throw the ball in between these zone coverages, which is a definitely a more – it's a throwable pass. It's, a, it's, it's an open route, 
but it's a much tougher window, especially when you consider that we are sending significant pressure at our opponent. And so he basically does that on both sides. You see here I have a curl flat on the left with the user kind of in this pocket. So as we look at this play post snap, I don't think he's setting any zone drop. So you see here, see how that hard flat, the layup throw would be to throw the ball to the running back. So the hard flat does a good job of taking that away. And then now at this point, the only other route that he can really throw is this corner route over here, or you're gonna have to really throw this into a tight window. So from a user perspective, Decroft uh, is able to kind of roll back to this post and really force this throw into this difficult throwing window, which is ultimately, as you see right here, likely what Pavin is doing is probably throwing the ball here. He might be throwing the ball away. And here's what you see, by that time, by the time that the corner route's open, the pressure is there and it's a potential D-line interception. So just kind of a quick note to self as kind of as, as I'm learning from this just as much as we all are. When you want to send a five-man blitz, it's really effective to play basically a cover three with hard flat coverage because it's a, of its ability. And here we see Decraft go to more of a drop eight, drop eight, cover four, which actually, again, we're just trying to close uh, the throwing windows. I'll talk about this before, but we want to constrain the most amount of space possible. And we want to make these we want to make these guys work on the other side of the ball. When you're playing defense, one of your main objectives, in my opinion, is to constrain the most amount of space possible. It is also to play essentially a, a defense where we're going to force the opponent to play left-handed. The way that I would equate this to the NBA is we're not giving up layups and we're not giving up wide open threes. That's what he just did with that defense right there as he was able to take away the deep one play score type stuff, but he's also able to um, able to basically force them to win the game in the hardest position or the hardest space to attack. The hardest space to attack, no matter what, really what sport you're playing, is the middle, middle of the field. The middle field, the mid-range, that's where we want to force them to have to attack. So what you should see is a lot of this from all the competitors. Now, Decroft actually here, he's going to go to this quarters defense. Honestly, haven't seen a lot of this. We saw this some in the tournament with, with uh, Henry versus Kobo. Kobo absolutely annihilated that defense. So we'll see. I, I just haven't seen this be super effective. It's kind of a variation of 3-3-5 three, three, wide, what 3-3-5 three, three, wide or 3-3 three, three cub used to be. Anyways, first and goal, Pavin, easy dot, gets him, and he's going to stay in this because I think Pavin wants to play quarters. Quarters is just the pressure's not as good from quarters, and also the run defense, as you saw right there, is not as effective, and I don't think we'll see Decroft go back to quarters against Pavin. We'll see, but it just did not look good whatsoever. So Pavin able to get seven, and, and kind of another little note, in my opinion, when you come into a game like this, obviously Decroft's knowledge is, is well above all of ours, and he's been playing competitive Madden for several years. I do think it's kind of interesting that I feel like he almost got a stop in dollar, and then we just shifted to quarters. Now, he might have done that due to the fact that he was in a uh, – maybe that's his, like, 30-yard line and in end defense because of its ability to stop RPOs, or I'm not sure why he did that. But in general, it's just kind of interesting uh, to me because he was – double safe to go – into any of the dollar plays is very difficult to beat and it, it does in my opinion constrain a significant amount of space now Pavin is going to come out in another defense that I love and that is 6-1 we got a full 6-1 ebook on the page as well and basically in my opinion this is one of, this is the best blitz in the game right now this six-man pressure it's super fast it's super effective it's, you're going to get your pressure what'll be really interesting to watch as we kind of watch through the pressures is the coverage that Pavin is putting on the field with these back four guys and then also how is he going to stop rpos the weakness of 6-1 is rpos and also in my opinion just getting to the flats in general it's kind of difficult to stop the quick throw flat so d croft should be going to double post here right off the bat he is going to block his tight end motion out his running back looking for a c route here maybe actually no he's going to go with this setup so this is kind of an interesting combo that i've seen a lot of players utilize recently and it's this motion out running back, and we're going to put the running back on a streak. Now, why are we putting the running back on a streak? I'm actually not really sure. Uh, it might be to try to push this inside quarterback. It might be to bluff the C route streak combination. But in general, I do love this little backside drag. The reason I like this is because what most people are going to do over here is that guy's going into a third. I'm just not 100% sure why 
the the streak. I don't know what that does for you because double post beats every coverage in the game. It might be if this guy's in a half, that might be the reason to push the half back. That could certainly be it. But we'll take a look at what the coverage is here. So here we get a send three, okay, from Pavin. And again, you can learn so much about somebody's game plan in the first drive. You can learn kind of their bread and butter. You can learn their plays in, in key situations. So Pavin off rip is going to go with a drop eight coverage. And what that drop eight coverage is going to be is we've got a 30 yard cloud over here on the left. We got a 30 yard cloud here on the right. And then it appears this guy is going to be dropping into a vertical hook. This guy looks to be a curl flat. Curl flat. So just standard drop eight double Mabel coverage out of a send three look. And as you see here, this is that inside quarter that I was talking about. Notice the running back streak is pushing that vertical. So now the user has to more than likely take this post and it should leave this drag open. But this is a tight window because we have a, a vert hook there. And at this point in the year, you have all these lurk artists. So everybody's going to be able to jump in coverage. So Anyways, just kind of a, a first step look. So you see here, and then now we're kind of, you know, plenty of time in the pocket. This is probably due to secure protectors at this point in the year. And it's going to throw right there. There's a KO right there, not able to KO. And uh, Decroft's going to get a good play right off rip. So that's his first play. Really good. Pretty standard double post setup. Again, I'm not 100% sure the purpose of the streak. I would wheel the running back, honestly. I don't know. Just kind of a different way to do it. But anyways here, so let's see. I think this is going to be curl flat. Let's see, motion out streak again. It's, again, that same combo, and I just don't know why. Maybe that's – I just don't get why you're doing that. Uh, and then get screamed at. So I did, want to, I did want to kind of peek at the coverage here. So this is curl flat. So why would he call this setup right here? What Decroft is expecting, because what most people don't – or uh, what most people don't do in bunch – is they don't call a corner route from the wide side of the field to the short side, like going from the wide side of the or going from the short side to the wide side. So the purpose of this corner is if this guy's on a 30 yard cloud, it's very difficult for him to get that far back because we're calling it on this side of the field. OK, so what more normally is the setup here would be to streak and then use double corners. And the reason why that would be more purposeful is because let's say that Pavin decided to throw this guy in a third, then this, this corner route to the right side wouldn't be open. All right. What Decroft is really anticipating here is a double Mabel coverage. And he's anticipating this guy to be on a cloud. And then if he is on a cloud, he's going to throw that deep corner. What Pavin ends up deciding to do here is he's going to send some pressure and we're going to get our first look at kind of how Pavin wants to put his zones around his blitz. So you see here, he's going to send one, two, three, four, five. I don't love the crash. If it was me, I would crash to the opposite side that you're sending the pressure in 6-1. But in general, he goes to this. And what we see here is it appears like we're doing a little double flat almost to the left. And then on the right-hand side, we're kind of doing a swatch, swap exchange with a third and then that five-yard curl flat to take away Again, what, we're, what are we trying to take away? In my opinion, we're trying to take away these layup throws, these little quick flats, and then we're trying to force you to have to make hard throws, which would be this corner route into a third, or maybe even just a check down drag, which is where my user's at. So kind of interesting. Um, let's see what happens here. So as you see, this third, uh, it might have even been a half, but I'm pretty sure, I don't know, he's kind of breaking inside like it is a half. But at this point right here, Decoff's probably throwing this because the pressure from 6-1 is so good. Even though he did block somebody, you also see this ability right here, which is important to mention, edge threat elite. Edge threat elite at this point in the year is fairly discounted. And so you can get players like this, I think it's Xavier Collins, with Lurk Artists and Edge Threat Elite. The really benef big benefit that they have is they will instant shed or get better uh, shed animations, especially if you block your tight end to try to pick up the blitz. It's been something that's been done out of 6-1 for the last three years. As you can see, the pocket is collapsing. He's able to break this down here. And then, yeah, that does look to me to be a half. So this is open, right? Again, this is another thing that is really important. Decroft makes the correct read, right? The route is wide open. It could be a very much so a potential touchdown. But due to Pavin's ability to get pressure and to put a coverage on the field that can hold up for long enough for the pressure to matter – he's able to get uh, an, an incompletion kind of like Decroft could have potentially been a throw out a, throw out a pick uh, or a, a throw out a sack pick. So really important to kind of 
look at all that stuff here as we're watching through. So second and 10, this is kind of a key situation. I actually love this route combo. So now Decroft's kind of doing some games here with this two-man game. So this time, so the running back has been on a streak every single time, right? So what he's going to do now, and I would assume the reason he's doing that is if you get a man up here. I'm not, again, I just don't know. But I don't know. i just not seen this two-man game be played as much. So Decraft's kind of interesting in that. But he's going to run a flat. Now, the other thing that's important here to talk about is this block tight end against 6-1. So a lot of people understand that like to pick up the dollar blitz, one of the main ways to pick up the dollar blitz is to block your running back, slide protect to the right, and then ID the corner on the left. Probably one of the better ways to pick up DB fired, free safety zone blitz, spinner, all those blitzes. For 6-1, six 6-1 one, six one is a little bit more similar to how three three five cub uh, used to work. And one of the best methods for blocking 3-3 Cub was to block your tight end. So the main pass protection system that D. Croft is employing is he is blocking his tight end to try to take away the pressure. Doesn't always work, but it does work better, in my opinion, than blocking your running back. And he's choosing to use the running back in a route combo to try to manipulate these, these guys right here. Okay, So here we get smash return, and then this... So the way this would normally be set up is the tight end would drag across. D. Croft just puts the running back on a table and motions him out. So anyway, as we look here to the left side, let's take a little peep at the coverage here. In very similar coverage, we get essentially a cloud that's going to be, it almost looks like these are not zone drop clouds, and this might be a vert hook here. This might be very well, could be an outside third and then we're just rolling the coverage to the left, and then our user is responsible for any flat, and then also any underneath route at this point. This is not bad coverage whatsoever, but let's take a look at kind of the result of the play. So that looks more like a cloud, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, we I just don't know why. Would, is this, this must be an inside quarter in that case, and this is probably a half. But in general, why, why run this coverage shell? In a sin five situation, why would you run this? The main reason why Pavin is running this coverage shell, again, is we're trying to take away or mitigate the layup throws that everybody wants to do, which is this flat. We want to take this flat away, but we also don't want to kill ourselves over top. So we're able to take away the streak and the flat on that left side. And then where does it force Decroft to throw? He has to throw in this middle area, which is where the user is. And assuming the pressure gets a nice shed or comes in quick, it really can limit the throwing lanes. So as you see right here, boom, get a nice little disengage. And Pavin's able to get him in a third and 16. Now, at the top of the levels, one of the biggest things that you need to be trying to do when you're playing defense is you need to be playing situationally. So it's not just I'm going to call Mabel coverage until they can beat it or I'm going to call roll coverage until they can beat it. It's I've set myself up now in a third and 16 situation. And, and Pavin actually goes to dollar, which is kind of interesting. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get Decroft on a fourth down. So here he does exactly the same thing that I was just talking about, which is important again. Just cannot stress this enough. So here's what Pavin's going to do. And, and why does he go to this defense? I'm not 100% sure why specifically go to this over 6-1. I think what he's basically trying to do here is he's trying to constrain the most amount of space possible by getting the safeties into the box. I think he's pretty confident. I think he literally wants to run this specific defense because of what is open in this specific defense. And the main thing open here, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to run free safety zone blitz. So we come out in double safety blitz, and then we're going to call free safety zone blitz. Now, the curl flats are on five yards. If the zone drops are the same, he could have also used hard flats, but it's likely that he kept his curl flats to five yards. So what's going to happen is the flat on the left is taken away. The flat on the right is going to be taken away. And then we're going to get a, a third, a third, and a third. Why call this coverage? Again, it's a five-man pressure. We are situationally in a third and 16. So what we want to do is we want to try to force Decroft to get to a fourth down and probably seven-ish yards. We don't want him to get a first down, obviously, but we also, uh, we also don't want him to get like a fourth and two. So what Pavin is doing is he's, again, he's taking away the layup throws. He's taking away this quick drag. And with the pressure, what we're trying to basically get to happen is our user is probably going to go to this crosser and then he's going to have to throw this little tight end dagger route for a couple yards. So, again, the whole idea is we're just trying to manage the situation. So you see here backing some players off. And here, as we can see, we get purple. This might be a cloud. Very well could be a cloud. 
Um, but I, I actually, yes, this probably is a cloud, a 20, 30 cloud. And then here you see one, two, three, four, five. Now notice Decroft blocks, chooses to block the running back as opposed to the tight end. So when he faces 6-1, he tends to block his tight end to try to pick up the blitz. When he faces Dollar, he's tending to try to block the running back. Another underrated piece of this defense is, as you can see, Pavin ended up containing. What is that going to do? It forces, it constrains the space the quarterback has to work with. He can't scramble up into this defense because the pressure is coming up the A-gap, but he also can't get outside because of the contain of the defensive ends. Really significant and underrated little thing like this in terms of how we're, how we're game planning defensively here. And so what he's able to do is he's able to really put Decroft in a tough spot. Decroft's going to have to make a good read under pressure, and we'll see if he's able to do it. So see here, as you can see, the user is able to kind of midpoint both of these. And then this crosser would be open way over here, but... It, you know, you've got to trust that there's no shed. It takes a long time to develop. So Decroft pretty much forced to check it down here. These curl flats very well could have been set on 10 yards, and they're coming down, rallying to tackle. And what this is going to do is, as you can see, now we get a fourth and 11. That's exactly what Pavin wanted to happen. So now this is where this is kind of the money down. This is where Pavin's trying to get off the field and get a, get an extra possession. Decroft is going to go to this double corner concept, ends up calling a timeout. Actually, I think Pavin called the timeout, didn't like the coverage. One of the reasons why he might have called a timeout right there is to get his zone drops, to, to set his zone drops differently. So he is going to come back out in the double safety. Decroft will probably run the same thing here. Appears like he's going to run that curl flat. Now, again, interesting. Yeah, okay, so... So the last time he ran this play curl flat against 6-1, he called this, this deep corner, but he did not have a short corner. And I talked about how if this defender was in a third, it would take away this because of where he's at on the field. All right, If the ball was over here on the right hash, then, the sh then, then, the curl then this corner would be open. Okay, So in general, what are we looking for defensively from Pavin? He's in double safety blitz. What I would what I would probably want to see here from Pavin is if we are going to anticipate this combo, he's probably going to choose to go user this and I'll kind of test things backside with maybe a yellow zone over there. So we'll kind of see what his situational play call is. Here we get it again. Free safety blitz. So we're sending five. Now, this is a really good adjustment. It's a really simple adjustment, but it, it can really help you he ends up choosing to put this slot corner in a vert hook as opposed to the purple. So now he's going to be able to kind of delay this throw. Again, when Decroft wants to pick up the dollar blitz, you see he blocks his running back. At this point, and again, we're only literally like 0.5 seconds into the play, all Pavin has to do is take this tight end. That is the main responsibility that he has uh, on this play. So you see here, it appears like we get another yellow zone right here. Now, the reason we're not covering the flat, again, is because of the situation. It's fourth and 11. We don't really have to, we don't really have to cover the flat here. And it appears like these are 30-yard clouds on the outside. And then it looks like we're going to try to fit this in. As you see, get a shed. And again, this is a really good example of what happens when you take away the layup throws and you force your opponent to have to work on the offensive side of the ball. Pavin ends up getting a stop, and now you know he's in a really good spot to be able to go down and get a two-possession lead. And now the pressure kind of shifts to Decroft, and Decroft has to play good defense. So here, gonna I love this bubble screen call. The reason I like the bubble screen call right there, it's a great play call uh, in that situation because you just got to stop. You know that Decroft is going to be super aggressive, more than likely. It's a great way to just kind of, you know, remind him that you have the RPO. Remind and, and RPO is a great constraint three play. Here we're going to audible to trips. Very well could be an RPO screen here. Uh, looks like Decroft's going to – this is the first time we've seen an audible to trips. Yep, RPO bubble left. And again here, Pavin is just trying to take advantage of the shift in possession. It's why you see a couple runs here because he's trying to basically get Decroft to make a, a, a mistake, if you will, or just essentially over – overcommit to things and then what that's going to do is open up some other stuff here we get a, an interesting little play call there with some motion blocking uh, i think that was basically a tight end corner with a wheel to the back and then we're just high lowing the defender over there on the right hand side 
and uh, we are going to take this to the quarter. So pretty pretty good first quarter for Pavin. You know, we'll go with uh, – and, again, we're in Colts bunch. Now we're in a short side bunch here to the right, and then there's that curl flat corner. That looked like almost like the screen play. Kind of interesting. A lot of players in this tournament really like the screen play, and I, I just – I would. I don't think I've called it all year. I mean, I get why it's good, but it's there's literally no protection to it. I mean, I guess if you roll out, there is. So here we get verticals from Pavin. Love this again. Decroft's getting super aggressive. So when I remember when I talked about the layup throws. So an example of a layup throw to me would be anything in this area of the field. That would be a layup throw to the right. So if you're gonna blitz. So you see here, Decroft, see the pressure? This defender, I guess he's manned up on the tight end, but there's no one here. There's no one here to take this away. This is free. It's 100% free. Pavin will never miss that read. It's his, this is literally the first read on the play. It's the first read on the play. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you can't stop everything defensively, of course, but, I mean, this is wide open, wide open, and we just get easy yardage. And now we get into the scoring range. I think he was trying to juke there, wasn't able to pull it off. And it does look like, okay, so now Decroft's going to go do some 6-1. And we're going to go to this little trips bubble, RPO bubble. Actually had the bubble there to the left. Jukes inside and gets up 14. So, okay, so Pavin put himself in a really good position there by getting seven. Now a significant amount of pressure has shifted to Decroft. And Decroft's in a position where he really needs to score if he now another little underrated thing is the clock management here as you can see up top there is three minutes and 54 seconds left in the quarter uh in the half so there is only there there is only three minutes and 54 seconds sorry about that i'll keep that back up there there is only three minutes and uh, 50 seconds left so if decroft wants to it's very likely that he can clock this out which very well could be going on in his head uh, so here we got double post, pretty standard setup. Going to audible to verticals. Now, notice Pavin's back in 6-1. I'm not sure why. It seems like when Pavin goes to 6-1, he wants to play double Mabel, is, is what it kind of seems like. Every time he's been in 6-1, he's been in some kind of variation of a double Mabel defense, and then he's, you know, kind of kind of pops some pressures. Let's see a little RPO. That's going to be open all day. And juke. The jukes are so good. Best ball carrier move in Madden 24 by far, the juke. Put jukebox on everybody you can. Right there, Decroft able to just take the, take the RPO. Uh, where does 6-1 struggle? It struggles against RPOs. So you want to make sure that your opponent has RPO defense. Here he goes to another one. The RPO right. And I think Pavan actually clicked onto that, which is crazy. Was he usering him from the beginning? Okay, watch this. Real, okay, so you see this user here? So why user this? Because if you jump down, you can get into this throwing lane and basically take this away. So that's kind of the, the, the reasoning there. And then you're basically just trusting the formation to blow the run up. Maybe he just got clicked off, but that's kind of what I would see. Could see the reasoning behind that being. And now at this point, Decroft is probably pretty much 100% thinking, let me just try to get seven and go into half. That way I don't give Pavin the chance. And that was great run defense. So if he gets seven and he goes into half 14 to seven, the, what that does is it doesn't give Pavin a chance to go score and Decroft gets ball at half. So it's, it's basically like it kind of keeps him in the game essentially. So there, that was kind of a weird play call. I want to take a look at the coverage behind it. So Pavin, Pavin doing a lot of like kind of creeping on different players. He actually blisses linebacker here. One, two, three, four, five. And then he's going to bail out. But essentially, what do we get? Same thing I was saying. So you see here, cloud, half. There's probably a quarter with a cloud. A lot of people love this quarter on the trip side. i got to put that in my notes for myself. And then a vert hook to the linebacker. So if you think about this coverage, what does it give up? This coverage doesn't really give up the flat because, again, he's kind of bailing. But he'll be able to come down and tackle that. Same thing. So, again, we're taking away the layup throws. So where are you going to have to throw this ball? You're going to have to throw deep to the corner on the left side or the deep crosser on the right side. And if you throw in the middle of the field, you know, again, that's where my user or uh, Pavin's user in this case. So you see here, 
Now this quarter, the reason this quarter is really good, this guy's running into the inside quarter right here. So this is really pretty good defense. He just unfortunately doesn't have Lurk Artist on Karloftis, and uh, Croft's going to go ahead and throw the ball away. So, so far, I mean, really, I mean, almost flawless defense from Pav and a lot of notes being taken. I haven't seen that covered shell that much against Trips tight end. Fourth and six. So fourth and six, Pavin's also playing a little bit more aggressive, trying to get Decroft to score so that he can get the ball back as well. Kind of another little element. Now, again, let's see if the running back streak. Yep, streak drag, block the tight end. There you get that disengage. And that's good defense again. And that is interesting. That should have been a KO. I don't know if he just didn't have the ability there. He might have had to have flat zone. He probably had mid zone. He probably had to have flat zone there. So that was really pretty good defense. Um, you know, Decroft not looking the greatest. Run the ball. Get the first 10, second and four. Now we're going to go to this combo. So we should see. So you see here again, same thing. Cloud, quarter, vert, cloud. This is probably a half. It could be a quarter, though. So this C route should be wide open. But the user's over here, so he's going to go take that, which is a really good user. Pressure in your face. This is a really good user. And gets a sack. That's a huge sack, too. That's a huge sack. And it's a loss of seven or eight. Puts him out of, I think that puts him out of field goal range. That's, that's a big sack. Yep, third and 13. No, I think he's still in field goal range here. All right, third and 13. Motion out, running back on a streak. I don't know why he does that. And just gets just gets absolutely screamed at. So, Verts, what's our first read? This, again, we're going to take away the layup throw. These, Pavin does a lot of, like, just basic cloud flats out here. It's kind of interesting. But anyway, so you get one, two, three, four, five. This is a man up that does not do very good, but it appears like he cross mans this guy here for the C route. He has a third here, quarter, and then a little cloud. And then my user is basically trying to cross her tight end. He just gets screamed at. Tight end is open, but it's a tough read to make under pressure. Almost gets another D line pick, fourth and 13. I mean, you can't play better defense than Bobbin has played the majority of this game. All right, so fourth and 13, ball on the 45-yard line, 32 seconds in the second quarter. If you're decropped, you kind of need to get it first down. This first down is really, really important. He's going to go to curl flat. He's going to go to verts. Some of these plays are kind of interesting against 6-1 and against double Mabel. Like, why are we running two streaks on the left? Get the scissor, really nice scissor there, and he hits that route. So if I'm Pavin here, does he send six or does he send five? He sends six. Yeah, i probably send five off the left, man up the tight end, and then take the crosser. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, but he gave that crosser up a lot. Eh, it's, it's a tough throw. D-cross definitely just throwing that no matter what. Yeah, that's eh, it's, it's a big-time throw from D-cross, honestly. And you have to make that throw. It's fourth down. You've got to throw it. You can't be throwing the ball away on fourth down. You've got to give yourself a chance. And so that's going to bring up first and 10 on the 21. If Decroft can get seven, he's still in a really – he's not in a terrible position anymore. He's got double post on the field, short side bunch to the left. And 6-1 is definitely giving him some troubles. Motion the back out. So we've got double corner. I just – yeah, I guess the C route will be open here. Is he going to throw it? Missed that read. All right, so we had a wide open touchdown, decided we'd rather throw the ball away. And that's some of the that's some of the mental side of Madden. You know, Decroft's kind of doing some stuff. That's just I don't know. That's just not not executing well. The streak here gets screamed at. I mean, this is just mm. Yeah, Pavin has him in a bag. 
Pavan has him in an absolute bag. The pressure is really getting to him. It's kind of interesting. All right, so third and 16. We got Verts here. It's actually a really good call. Pavan creeping here. Probably, I'm not sure why, but probably just to help with coverage. Ends up calling a timeout. One thing you can do, one really underrated adjustment of the 6-1 against trips is that middle linebacker can be cross-manned onto really anybody on the field. So by cross-manning that middle linebacker, you can then use or somebody else. Here he goes to double safety. Um, he's probably going to go to free safety zone blitz. And the reason behind that is, again, we're going to take away the gimme throws. So we'll see. He should click. It's kind of an interesting decision. Okay, no, we're going to just drop back. So here he's going to go heavy coverage. So these are going to be 30-yard clouds on the outside, should be. And then this is just a – oh, it's a situation because of 18 seconds. Just goes significant drop back coverage, third and 16. Decroft rolls away. Going to have to throw that away. Nothing there. And uh, that is going to put him in a fourth down and 16, and he's going to have to take three. That's crazy. All right, so Pavin here in the second half. We'll see – or actually end of half here in a half situation. Goes to tight. Nothing really there. Good stuff by Decroft. I actually like that. Like, just sending heavy, heavy pressure is uh, is a really good way to kind of play into half. Send heavy pressure, have some deep halves, maybe a deep cloud flat. Here we go. Second half, Pavin and double safety, and Decroft going to start out with a RPO. Now, granted, if Decroft gets seven right here, he is totally right back in the game. He just needs to get one stop on defense, and he's really fine. So this is one of the big uh, – another really big benefit – to always kicking the ball because when you – and there, Pavin, this is a great throw. So right here, so one of the biggest weaknesses of double safety defense is especially if this is not a 30-yard cloud. If this is just a basic cloud flat, like let's say DB fire, this deep half really struggles to get back to this little fade over here. So what you're going to see here is Pavin is going to play as you see, see – this is DB fire, see? So we're sitting five, and then these clouds are basically at 10, and he does this a lot. And normally it's pretty good, but as you can see, this verts really just does a really nice job of manipulating that half, and Decroft is right back in the game. Pavin had pretty much played perfect defense the entire first half, and Decroft didn't figure it out necessarily, but he got it figured out for a play, and now he's back in the game. He has to get a stop here, or at least hold the three. So we'll see how he does with that. Second and eight. And here, let's take a look at this. So this is kind of the trips D. So he's going to man a line. Is this quarters? No, this is this is dollar. So we've got basically a Mabel. Mabel coverage to the right with the deep cloud, deep half. Then we have quarters, which kind of interesting decision. A lot of people like to put a 30-yard cloud left side. And then we have a random spy. I'm not sure why we're doing that. And then we're manning this guy up. So this spy will probably get adjusted to hook curl or something. And we'll see. Maybe he just wants that. No, I guess he just wants the spy so that he sits over the middle, but he also can just watch the quarterback. So cool. And actually gets pretty decent sheds for that. That's probably the one of the better three-man sheds that I've seen out of that coverage show. So here we go, third and eight, free safety zone blitz. Remember what I said, don't give up the layups. We have short cloud flat, short vert hook, short – Hard flat, middle third, and then this guy looks to be a middle third and then an outside third. And then basically if the user, if he sees anything go right, he's going to go bail to it. And uh, here we don't get that, and that should have been a pick. That's crazy. Wow. Pavin almost throws him, throws him a pick, and all of a sudden this game has really shifted in the last 50 seconds of the third. And again, it just shows the benefit of getting the ball at halftime. So here we get DB fire. So we have a third. We have a hard flat from the safety, uh, which is kind of an, a, a really good adjustment. And, and, and this is what Pavin didn't do and how he got burned on this right side. And then we're going to man up this tight end. Now, the purpose of this man up on the tight end is to take away the seam wheel from verticals. Hard flat. Why? We don't want to give any layup throws like this quick flat from either one of these players. And then we have this half. He'll kind of play seam streaks and stuff like that. So what's my user or what's Decroft's user responsible for? Anything in that middle of the field. That's his main priority. 
Running back goes on a streak, user has to take it. Running back goes on the Texas, user has to take it. So you see here, we send five. We got really good heat. We got a running back going to the flat. So as soon as Decroft sees that he's not on a Texas or a streak, his attention is over here. Okay, as you can see, kind of turning in there. C route. I don't feel like he's that worried about the C route here. It's a tough throw. We're going to trust that third. So he should be kind of fully over in here. And you see there he is. So this is double post. That's taken away. That's taken away. The wheels kind of bracketed with the third. I mean, this is a hard throw. This is the open throw uh, to the right side. But also I feel like Decroft's doing the right thing. He's taking away the double post. So this is literally like your fifth read on this play. Pavin throws that and missed it or uh, missed the C route basically. And also he was getting screamed at while he was doing that. So, you know, that's another piece of this. Had, had he had more time, had he been able to pick up the pressure, probably could have hit the C route, right? So those are all little factors. Decroft going to go right back to trips. And I think he's trying to manipulate. I'm not sure why I call that play. That play did not work last time. I guess that's fine. Juke in. And he's going to take the lead. That's insane. All righty. So there you go. <laughs> All of a sudden, Decroft back in front and really in control of the game. If he gets one more stop here, Pavin is then on the pressure seat. I mean, Pavin needs at least three here. He really needs seven. And the game has really shifted uh, with the fact that Decroft got the ball at half here. I don't know what that decision was. Pavin has just ah, some of these decisions. All right, so vert hook to the right. We've got a uh, send five out of DB fire. Really love this coverage right here. And that actually should have been, I mean, he got a nice animation there. That was actually pretty good defense. He just simply rolled the coverage from the wide side to the short side. It's one of my favorite ways to blitz out of a Sun 5 look. We'll see if he does it again here. He might go right back to it. Yeah. So, um, again, remember I talked about this previously. What are we trying to take away? The layup throws. So this hard flat right here. He's going to take away the wheel. He's going to take away the tight end. He's going to take the gimme throw to the left side. He's going to take that away. This hard flat to the right. I probably wouldn't put this hard flat to the right. I'd probably put a shaded on yellow right here. But same kind of thing. If this guy's on a flat, he's taking it away. If you got a drag, he's taking it away. So what this does is it forces you again. And this is really, I think, so it's so interesting to me when you really look at the covered shells that these guys are putting on the field. How consistently it's basically this right here or it's a, a cloud to the right. And the reason that's important, guys, is understand that when you're sending five, there's only a couple coverages that are really effective. And again, what this does is it makes the opponent work. It makes them have to throw the ball into coverage. It makes them have to throw the ball into space that is going to take time to develop. And you're going to force your opponent to beat you by hitting mid-range jumpers as opposed to shooting wide open threes and layups. So we'll see how this plays out for him. See what route combo Pavin goes to. As you see, same thing. I mean, that's really good defense. And then he's bagged up, and he's got to scramble out. Okay? Really good defense from Decroft. I actually love what he's doing right now on defense. So we go to trips here. Let's see what the trips adjustments. See if he bails out in the coverage. Free safety zone blitz. Again. And it, it, it's basically from, from – this is a little bit of an oversimplification. But from what I'm seeing – if you're going to drop eight, it's either a Mabel or a four, cover four drop coverage. If you're going to send five, it's almost always a, either roll coverage or a thirds coverage with hard flats. A drop cover three with hard flats. Here we got a double flat to the left. Again, this is a coverage. See, look at this. Hard flat, cloud flat. Hard flat, cloud flat. Two halves. Blitz the user to get better sheds. I don't know why he's not blitzing the user. That's kind of interesting. I haven't seen that. I love the QB spy. Um, Bo Jackson's 99 speed. That QB spy just got him to stop. That's incredible. Really nice defense from Croft. And uh, now he's in a really good spot. Now, Pavin, why do you not take three there? Well, it is fourth and one. It's an offensive Madden. And now Pavin's in a position where he's going to start pressing. As you see, one, two, three, four, five man pressure. And this is that route combo that D Croft's gone back to again and again with, again, where's the ball right here? So if this, thir if this cloud is 30 yards, this is going to get over the top of that. So we'll see here to the right. So as you see, he doesn't play cover two, which is good by Pavin. 
And then basically all he has to use her is that drag. He uses the drag, takes that away. Decroft's got to scramble out, and that's why you get a Bo Jackson 99 speed. Can do that for you. He's able to get out of the pocket, get nine yards when he really should have been sacked. So Pavin's body language, not the best here. Going to go double post. What's crazy is Pavin has been playing really good Madden, and I feel like he just, I don't even know. Sometimes you watch a Madden game back, and you're like, how did that happen? Double post with the drag. Love that read. Great playmaker. Great playmaker. That's why, and that's just a slant post concept, guys. That's just the shallow cross concept. That's, that concept has been good in Madden for so long because it really puts triangles in the middle of field attack space really well. Here we get a little cover. Yeah, this is just a lot of it. Yeah, kind of, probably kind of Russian. I mean, it did work there. A little tight end drag. I just don't know why you call that play. Let's go to trips again. Should be C route to the RPO screen. Not doesn't have the ball on the right side, but it's offset, so it doesn't really matter. So a quick tip, if you guys didn't know, if you're in bunch offset or trips offset, if it says offset in it, the handoff animation will be the same no matter which side they're on. If it's like trips tight in or bunch or bunch tight in, then it does make a difference if you're in your quarterback's throwing hand or not. You get faster handoff animations when you give the ball to the running back if the running back is on the th on the throwing hand of the quarterback. So here he goes to trips tight end offset, so it's going to be the same speed no matter which side the running back is on. Here we get a slant post. Concept, flat, tight end. Good read. And Decroft takes a two-possession lead. All right. So now Pavin, this is pretty much a you got a this is a stay alive drive. You have to score here to stay alive. Again, if you just notice the covered shell on the back end there, it was another, you know, cover three hard flat with um with with a sin five. With the user in the middle field. That's the main way, the main coverage that we've seen Decroft use the majority of the game has been that. Uh, here, this is a trips adjustment with the man alignment. I don't know that I love that. I just don't know. It's mainly coverage against trips. I haven't seen him blitz trips one time. I also think it's weird that he's not blitzing his user. I think he's doing that because Fred Warner has mid zone KO. But if you don't blitz your user, he's always oh, he's running cover six because it's a match coverage. That's why he's doing that. I'll have to, I'll have to look closer at that. But he's if you don't blitz your user and you send three, it um, you don't get any sheds. There's a nice read from Pavin. I don't remember. I think it might have been C route there. So Pavin's moving. Let's go double safety blitz. We'll see. There's the audible or flip. Now we're in quarters. Again, I'm not sure why. Does he want to run? Uh, oh, he wants to run roll coverage. So when he wants to run roll coverage, he goes to quarters. Maybe. It may just be a different send five, you know. I mean, it seems like he's just sending five out of quarters and then uh, putting – putting. it's basically spinner. Cover four drop. Again, see, see how he's not blitzing his user? So the sheds, notice notice the sheds. Doesn't really get sheds. It's just Pava, I feel like, kind of just situationally moves, moves through the pocket a little quick. Double safety go. Pretty much the D. Here we go, send five. And again, same adjustments. We have a half here to protect against the bomb, but here he goes back to a third. Boom, really nice, really good defense, and that's okay. Pavan made the hardest throw on the play. You tip your cap, you move on. You make him make that hard throw. Sometimes you take it away, of course. But right there, first time we'd seen him make that throw all game. Really good read from Pavan, but also you can't say it's bad defense. It's just Pavan made the right read, had the block, had the protection, right? But if you're going to give something up, because you have to give something up when you send five, I would give that up over the layup throws, 100%. Third and goal, really nice red zone defense so far from Decroft. Pinch D-line at a 6-1, blitzing the user, and gets it again. Really nice. All right, fourth and goal. This is where, you know, again, red zone wins you games. If you have good red zone defense – Making your opponent work up the field and then have to score in the most constrained, the most space constrained space on the field 
is super good. So here we're going to send six. We're going to use yellows and cl uh, probably shaded down everything here. Take away the quick throw is really nice. Great user. And that's it. That's it. That's the pick. Pretty much game over. They might play this out, but that's going to be pretty much GG's. Uh, D. Croft's just going to run this out. Probably just run the ball. Second and 10, third and 13 here. Ends up throwing it. Popping, not calling timeouts, interestingly enough. Block that tight end because he's playing 6 1, as you can see here. Gets pretty decent protection. Corner out, manipulates it. Now we go down. Is he not going to go down? He's going to score. Not sure why we did that. I guess just I guess just cause. Um, but here again, cover four. It's really interesting to watch the cover shells. Decroft's not doing a lot defensively. He really isn't. He's audibly into certain things, but in, in in essence, if he sends three, then it's pretty much cover three hard flat. If he sends or if he sends five, it's cover three hard flat. If he sends three, it's probably. Uh, some type of either double Mabel, match concept, or drop eight, cover four. So kind of just interesting when you really get into this. Defensively, it seems like Decroft's kind of staying in the same five-ish adjustments uh, defensively. It really hasn't had – hasn't really done anything else than that. And he's bagging one of the best players in the world, uh, the guy that's actually, I think, the number one mutthead seed – uh, in the Mudhead League. So really good game by Decroft. Really good comeback because the first half did not look good for him, but able to come back and uh, get the W. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get access to my full ebooks, all that stuff is available by being a Patreon member. Link to sign up for that is in the description below.